Is anyone in the White House hiding information about the President's health or his ability to do the job day to day? Absolutely not. Given the fact that it's more than a bad night when his political future is threatened, would he be willing to provide more medical information? Would he be willing to have Dr. O'Connor provide more to answer these questions? It, look, Kelly, I certainly uh, understand the question, appreciate the question, but what no, we don't. have provided has been very transparent. She doesn't appreciate has been, the question. Has and been. The country watch. But February, February was this year. It wasn't too long ago. It was indeed this year, mm -hmm. and we were, year. we were, we provided we transparent uh, report, a thorough report. For many Americans who were concerned about his capacity. The, the, notice the press. First off, welcome back, Dana Lash with you. Notice the press is so. They're like, wait. We can ask these. We can ask these questions again, guys. Hurry up! Let's ask these questions to pretend like we've been asking them all along. So, can you tell us, Kareen, uh, the president? Uh, does he is he is he doing his day to day job? Because you know, it came out yesterday that he has a daily nap. There's like so many leaks coming right now. I can't. I've just. I feel like a drunk gold digger in the middle of a waterfall. Just. Ah! And just like taking everything in my pan. I don't even know how to deal with this. Can of oh, popcorn. <sighs> Dana, you should take this seriously. It's about the future of our country. Have you met me? So I love, first off, that the media is like, oh, it's we're the reporters? Us now? We get to because they haven't done any of this. Look at how hysterical they are. They're running around. The newsrooms in disarray. They're probably knocking each other down because they're so desperate to make it look like they've been reporting on this all along. Look at them show up with their pencil tucked behind their ears. So you're telling us, Kareen. Wait, who the hell is you? Where, where did you start asking questions? You've been silent for years. For four years, you've been quiet. Now, all of a sudden, you're asking questions because you see the power shifting. They go where the power is, right? They go where the power is. That's like... That's like um, Talladega Nights when Ricky Bobby lost his wife. And she's like, I go with the race car driver. I go with him. Like when Ricky got into his accident before his daddy rehabilitated him with a puma in the back seat, right? And he ended up losing his, his wife. And she went with the other, that travels, follows power. The media is just like that. They're like Ricky Bobby's wife from Talladega Nights. They follow power. So now they're going to start asking questions. They see these leaks coming out. That's a signal to them. Oh, it's okay to start asking these things now. Mm. We can start asking these questions. Mm. Yes, that's so. Is anyone hiding information like this? Audio sound by two. Listen to these questions now. Listen. Uh, I'm going to ask something delicate, and uh, you, you may not like it. The president may not like to hear it if he's watching, but I think the American people need to get a yes or no answer on this. Does President Biden, at 81 years old, have Alzheimer's, oh my any form of dementia, or degenerative illness <coughs> that would <coughs> cause these sorts of lapses? And it's a yes or no question. And if you don't know, why don't you, as one of his senior staff members, know? The, the I yes have or an no answer, answer for you. Are you ready for yes. it? Yes. It's a no. And I hope you're asking the other guy the same exact question. Oh, wow. So there, uh, listen to it. They're, they're, please don't beat us. I'm going to ask this question because we got the green light that it's okay to ask it now. Please don't kill us. Um, is it okay, Kareem? Like he's flinching. Like he's, you know, w waiting, like he's waiting to get hit. Uh, these people are rat bastards. You know why? Because they didn't ask a single one of these questions for four years. They knew it. They're culpable in it. I saw this tweet from, uh, what is it? A uh, big tater over at CNN. He didn't with CNN anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. He goes, He. I swear to you, he tweeted this. Hands to sky. Big tater spending G's. He's tweeted, my humble message for everyone enraged at the news media right now, the crisis of faith and Biden's capabilities is not a media creation. Democratic Party officials are the ones driving this conversation. I'm sorry. Hold up here, tater. Hold up. Let's pull this Prius over for a second, have a little convo. What do you mean that the crisis of faith in his capabilities is not a media creation? Are you kidding me? You fluffers hid it for four years. You hid it for four years. You didn't hide it. We all saw it, and we all asked questions, and what'd y'all do? You called us conspiracy theorists. 
You called us names. You said that we were making fun of his stutter. You said all these things. I mean, surely y'all remember this, because I remember it just as clear as day. I mean, it literally a couple of weeks ago, the Washington Post, when the White House, when Corinne Jean-Pierre forgot that it was deep fake and called it cheap fake, they gave four Pinocchios to these videos that showed by, I mean, clearly Biden is about to defecate his drawers, right? He's like barely cognizant of where he is. And it gave the, it, it dismissed, in fact, hear what, hear what it was. It was a quote, pernicious effort to reinforce an existing stereotype. Washington Post was telling everyone that you were lying and they gave you these little cutie Pinocchios. You get a Pinocchio. You're going to get a kick in the butt. Give me a Pinocchio. This is true. We all see this. We see him re- We see him falling down on flat surfaces, not remembering where he is, calling on dead people at events that have been dead for quite some time. We, we see all of this. And y'all were saying just two weeks ago, oh, well, you know, you, you're going to have to get four Pinocchios. I mean, they're leading people with cheap. Here's the headline. Cheap fake Biden videos enrapture right wing media, but deeply mislead. This was the Washington Post two weeks ago. A particularly effective attack on a political candidate can come in the form of a video snippet that appears to reinforce an existing stereotype. The social media feed of the RNC regularly turns out misleading clips of President Biden intended to show that he is too old for the job. Oh, and they keep going. They quote White House Deputy, uh, White House Press Secretary Andrew Bates saying that, well, you know, fortunately, some of President Biden's right wing critics don't respect their readers. They're basically saying that, you know, you're, they're, you're all stupid. And then they add in their Pinocchio's tests, the use of these clips is an especially pernicious couple of, of ex- couple of examples of manipulated video. Could you use more like bad grammar? Thank you. What we label isolation under our guide to manipulated video because it's intended to create a false narrative, blah, blah. So now they're like, well, wait a minute. Why is no one asking about this? The same people, hands to sky, are now asking, well, why are no one's asking about this? I mean, this is. Now, there were some. Let me pull this up. I have so many examples for you. We could be here legit all day. Oh, I came. I came ready today. I mean, I come ready every day, but I was I was just eating all the popcorn that we have in Texas, watching all this stuff. So now what they're saying is, is well, you know, one of the reasons maybe perhaps we were hesitant to report on this is because, you know, talking about old age is very delicate. I don't care about that when you're talking about the, ex- you're talking about the White House. You're not talking about sitting grandma down and asking her if she's too old to drive anymore. It's a completely different scenario. This is the leader of the free world, the largest, most powerful nation on God's green earth. And you're afraid to ask tough questions because you think that talking about old age and political office is just delicate. Then you're too delicate for your damn job because you're not there to be delicate. You're supposed to be the attack dog on behalf of voters, the watchdog on behalf of voters. You're not supposed to be limping around like a beaten animal, too terrified to ask your political betters questions that you're supposed to be asking by very nature of the creation of your industry. These people are all culpable. I do not let a single one of them off the hook. I'm not going to give them kudos for just now. Oh, well, wow, so-and-so, Jake Chapper over CNN was asking some tough questions. So-and-so, Kelly O'Donnell's asking some tough questions. They were all in on this until like two weeks ago. This didn't change until they saw the signal coming down, the bad signal coming down from the White House. Oh, well, guys, looks like he might be on his way out here of the, might be withdrawn from the race. Then, only then did they feel that it was safe for them to do their jobs. And they're only doing it so that they can position themselves to be adjacent to the next person with power. That is the only reason they're doing this. I mean, the fact that stuff like this has been hid for so long and the fact that they attacked all of us when we brought it up, it's the great Biden cover-up. You know, like, for instance, ProPublica uh, released this interview wherein it was an unedited interview that they just released yesterday. This interview was conducted nine months ago. 
Why are they now releasing an unedited interview of Biden that was conducted nine months ago? Well, they said, quote, We believe it is worth giving the public another chance to see one of Biden's infrequent conversations with a reporter. No, you didn't. The first interview, the first time you released this interview, it was all edited and it was very short. And now he has all of his flaws and his blemishes in it. And you did it to add to this. You did it to cover your ass. You did it to make it look like you're being honest and transparent with the reader. ProPublica left-leaning site. You Pravdas. And then you have, listen to this, Susan Glasser, who's with New York Magazine, tweets, Well, this is such a key point. You know, where were all of these folks when Biden's decision to run again could have been headed off? When so many took a pass on thinking about the implications of someone asking for a second term that would have him serving to age 86, where were you? I just gave you the example of Washington Post two weeks ago, calling us liars, giving us four Pinocchios. You guys were calling us conspiracy theorists, all of you. You were saying that it was right-wing narrative, all of you. You were saying that it was cruel, that we were mocking his stutter, or that we were just trying to deflect from Trump, or whatever, whatever. Now, Again, now they're only admitting that everything that we've seen for the past four years is true because it was impossible to say that it was a deep fake or a cheap fake to watch Biden stand side by side with Trump, a guy who's almost his age, at a debate. It's not an issue of age. It's an issue of cognitive health, and that was put on clear display. I mean, you had two similarly aged dudes who were on the stage, and only one of them really knew where he was. All these people are right there with it. I mean, this this coming from uh, uh, Semaphore. So st- Jill Abramson, these are NBC people telling Semaphore, uh, the Biden White House clearly succeeded in a uh, massive cover-up to the degree of, presidents, of the president's feebleness and his serious physical decline. You got this in the newsletter that went out last night. They literally said this. They were, that's what Jill Abramson told Semaphore, a news outlet. They, they, it, this is crazy. Semaphore wrote, quote, it's clear the best news reporters in Washington have failed in the first duty of journalism to hold power accountable, to find out the truth. The Biden White House clearly succeeded in a massive cover up to the degree. No, 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 no one, no one, no one. They did not cover it up. You covered it up. You could have reported on it. They don't have the power to cover it up. You do. And you rat bastards in the press covered it up. Just like you covered up the censorship with the White House and social media. Just like you covered up everything that Fauci was doing. Just like you covered up the fact that masks didn't work and the injections did not actually transfer immunity. Just like you covered up how the Russian collusion story was absolutely fake and that you knew that all of these intelligence officials that signed onto this letter were lying and that they signed onto the letter knowing that they were lying. You covered that up time and time again and time again. You are not the victim. You are part of the problem, and in some instances, you are worse. We expect this of Marxist politicians. But as we approach Independence Day, I'll have our so-called free rat bastard press remember that this country was founded on the sacredness of the free press, which they spit on, the legacy of which they spit on every single day. They don't do their due diligence, and they have the audacity to turn on the people whom they are supposed to report for, to turn on the people for whom this government gets its authority uh, by way of consent, to turn on the very people, to turn against the animating spirit of liberty that made this nation so amazing, they're really, truly responsible in all of this.